I'm calling bullshit on the opening title card that claims this movie was filmed in Oregon, Washington, and Alberta, Canada. Yeah, I completely believe that this movie spread out among two countries to film people fucking in a backyard. That's... that's all I got for this piece of... What the fucking savage beast? That's fucking stupid. To Matt once again, what about another video? There's another request thanks to paul thank you so much for that for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos or topics or reviews or whatever feel free to send them either directly to my paypal or join my patreon both links are down below in the info box now paul's asking me about what are my favorite cinema snob slash brad jones reviews or moments and why now for those who don't know brad jones is a youtuber who has a channel, Stoned Gremlin Productions, where he plays a character named the Cinema Snob. Now, I think I first found him way, way, way back in the day. I think I was looking up Friday the 13th reviews. But, like, for ones not many people talk about, like, Part 7 or Part 5 and so forth. Because everyone tells about the first one. And then I saw this review, Friday the 13th Part 5, by this guy who was very low lighting and sometimes he's sitting on the floor sometimes he's not and really had fun with his review that was entertaining and i got the gist of what he was doing he was playing a character like what would a snobby critic think about a film like friday the 13th part 5 that was kind of the the joke of the whole thing lovingly homaging stuff people like roger ebert things of that nature and then started watching his stuff he had one channel and then things went off kilter with copyright so then he had another channel he was with different websites <clears throat> in particular that guy with the glasses nostalgia critic and then all, that whole thing happened <clears throat> uh, brad jones Seems like a nice guy. Seems like a very nice guy. Uh, I like. I, I'm still a fan of his of this day. Do I always agree with him on stuff? No. But let's be honest. Let's be flat honest. Uh, there are many people who disagree with me on stuff. There are things I disagree with my friends on stuff. You disagree with everybody. That's just how it is. But there's also a lot of things you can't agree on. Which is also very cool. That's I think how you did a camaraderie within a group and yeah he's not a fan of films like battle los angeles i am he really enjoyed the predator and the last jedi i did not he was not much a fan of willie's wonderland with nicholas cage i have the blu-ray up there I rather enjoyed that film. That's actually one of my favorite films this year. Loved Willy's Wonderland with Nick Cage. But, again, there's a lot of stuff we will disagree on. But, I did. Yeah, I think the guy seems like a nice guy. He's entertaining. And I've enjoyed many of his shows. He started this thing called Brad Tries many years ago. I remember first seeing that way back in the day. where you, There was another website that hosted their videos. I forget what it's called. But then that got taken down thankfully i was able to save a lot of the brad try stuff i have them on a hard drive uh there's only a couple i could not find there was one that because it's 
pretty much just him trying different food. It was kind of as a dad or just kind of just for fun. I have nothing better to do. So he tried like the new Mountain Dew Whiteout at the time. This is like over 10 years ago. Then like, he kept trying weird stuff like edible insects. Oh, man. All uh, right. Down the hatch. Oh. Oh, God. Oh. Ah. That's fucking rancid. Jesus Christ. Oh, for the love of shit. Ah. I don't have my fucking wa Hang on. Alright. Let's do this. Chocolate covered buds. Steven Seagal's lightning bolt, which probably tastes worse than the fucking edible buds. Deep throat energy drink. Old discontinued like Crystal Pepsi. Yeah, this was over ten years ago. Coca Cola Black. Urge, which is pretty much Surge, but Urge, uh, Pepsi Blue, all that. I mean, and it was interesting to find out about these lost drinks, and at times he'd have very funny reactions to them. And God, I'm trying to think of like the ones I could have find. Oh, one that was like a Candwich. It was like a sandwich in a can. I could never find that episode. So I guess that episode is long gone. But I could never find that one. Most of them I was able to find. But like ones like that I was not able to. But he has that. He would do this thing called midnight screenings. With him and his friends. But since there's really no screenings anymore. It's pretty much just him doing reviews. But the ones I watched the most. Was Cinema Snob and Brad Tries. He also had this little series with this guy named Jared called Brad and Jared, which was fun because I think they work rather well together. I think they have good chemistry with each other. But Brad tries, like the ones that come to mind is like this one called Bird's Nest where he drinks it <laughs> because he didn't realize how thick it was. He said, what the hell is that? It's, that's not what it seemed like it would feel like. Edible insects because he almost threw up. When he ate the Batman 89 cereal, he almost died. <laughs> he literally almost died from it. Don't believe me, watch Brad Jones like Batman cereal. Oh here let's let's see if it still holds up. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> mm. It tastes like shit. <laughs> God. Oh. Mm. Mm. Look, I guarantee you that. Oh, hang on. <clears throat> I guarantee you that in 1989, it didn't smell like a homeless man had been sleeping in it for, for almost 30 years. <laughs> yeah, my neighbor's rooster's like mourning for his health during that episode. The Reggie bar, when he tried to eat the Reggie bar and I did it looked like he was ready to puke his guts out. Like a Lucio Fulci film. And Cinema Stop, like I said, I, I like a lot of it. I do miss the way it was back in the day when he did the Cinema Snob. Uh, because I actually thought that he didn't do this on purpose, but the low lighting, it being fairly dark. At times he's sitting in like a dingy chair or he's sitting on the floor. I think that actually kind of works with the type of films he was reviewing. These weird off-kilter exploitation, micro-budget or shot on shittio. Which is actually the first time I heard that term was from him, shot on shittio. All this other stuff. And actually, I think, actually, if I do say actually a few more times, I thought it fit his motif. 
and he, he didn't do it on purpose it's just what he had at the time is like okay i'm sitting on on the floor there's a time where all his dvds got stolen his movies got stolen so he didn't have much in the background and also the movies he would review were very unknown and so you'd be entranced in learning about the film let alone the review itself which was entertaining like back in the day he would review films like porno holocaust the deke crazy fed ethel 2 you know alucarda zero in and stream and like what the hell is that movie and that was kind of fun of like what the hell is that movie i'm going to find out and then there's stuff like monkey with 72 magic there's nail gun massacre pierre kirby i'm like who the hell is pierre kirby war of the wizards turkish star wars a 1991 remake of terminator that's like 40 minutes long and shot on video that's what it means like wow what the hell is like dude this colony of the dead that's where it was very interesting and nowadays once a while he'll review an obscure film like a kind of an obscure film but mainly it's okay here's a hellraiser sequel or here's rhinestone with sylvester stallone here's saw the first saw film i think he even did like halloween 2018 so it's okay here's a hellraiser sequel here's this and that and so it just they're still fun to watch just doesn't have that big question mark mysterious what the hell is that quality to it i mean we all know godzilla vs khan but at the same time how many people know about fucking curse of the cannibal confederates or weasels ripped by flesh or zombie 1990 was that was that what the hell it was called zombie seven no, i think it's called zombie seven but i can see why no one would take them seriously when they keep sounding like this well it's very simple we have to use the surest way of destruction what do you mean we have to easily totally destroy the brain or separate the head from the rest of the body People are still out enjoying their afternoon when, uh-oh, looks like this guy is about to be attacked by Leatherface's dick. Although I do understand why they'd want to cut this guy's stomach open, because apparently it's filled with bubble tape. And as for, like, favorite episodes, moments, uh, there's one, The Deek, which is how I first heard about that. I don't know, many years ago I did this marathon of Bigfoot movies, so that's one of the ones I reviewed, because I'm like, well, Brad Jones reviewed it, so it may be funny to review. So it's the subject matter, how goofy it is. Also, I did a little skit where there's a guy in a Bigfoot suit he killed, and but then he turned into his buddy Jared, and then Brad's like, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, one was Tales from the Quad Dead Zone. I think that's one of his funniest. He's like got a BB gun or something. And he gets so pissed at the film. He walks outside. And you just see him go. Pew, pew. Oh shit. I almost forgot. Because believe me. That would be as tragic as an orphanage fire. The doll talks. So yeah, he talks, and he's fucking rude, too. 
much is that for? Because I want you to pay for it, bitch. And without even fucking leaving his phone number, he takes off the next morning. Clearly, because the bitch is just fucking crazy. Uh, the refrigerator. That's an episode that kind of fits with the audio, the dark picture, the the idea of the the subject matter itself. Like you'd been taking on this weird journey throughout this obscure film from back in the day of the eighties or nineties or seventies, and you're like, what the hell's going to happen next? Nudist colony of the dead about how even though that film the song seemed catchy. And he even he's being caught up by the song. The point he's ready to dance, and <laughs> that leads to uh, crazier antics. Uh, the Sylvester Stallone one, the Italian Stallion. What he's trying to do, the beginning of the film where Stallone's jogging around playing the playground, and he's recreating that. Let's see. The ones like I did in Zombie 7, just how funny the movie is, that helps too, with and that it's easier for him to the riff on and such. I did stuff like the Terminator. It might be 94. I don't think it was 91. It might have been 1994, actually, that someone like remade the Terminator shot on sh video. I think it was 94. Like Curse of the Campbell Confederates. It was funny because it was so bored of a movie. He had literally had a fast forward. And he shows that. And he, you know some of his early reviews. Like he's talking about the DVD. The DVD-R he bought it from. And how. Like these weird things on the DVD-R. Like what? They have trailers on this? Or wait. Like there's this little thing by the subtitles. What the hell was that? I think that was. 72 magic I forget exactly what one that was but yeah Tales from the Quad Dead Zone Curse of the Cannibal Confederates Weasels Ripped by Flesh The Italian Stallion New This Colony of the Dead The Refrigerator The Deek uh, those are the episodes that stand out a bit more than others but yeah very very entertaining. Oh, like when he did a series of videos like E.T. ripoffs or E.T. porno ripoffs. Because there's so many of them. And again, you're just like, what the hell is going to happen next? Kind of that reaction. What the fuck? Also, I miss his opening theme, theme song. And I get why he's doing more popular movies. I get why he can't use the theme song, which is the greatest American hero. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. Because then that copyright, that hurts with copyright. So he can't use that song anymore. But again, I do miss that song in his reviews. But again, it's just the copyright will tag him. And then with more popular f films... They'll get more eyes on the channel, which helps with the, the channel. So I do understand that. Like I said, I just missed those like 1985 weird, weirdo, what the hell movie is that kind of thing. But maybe it's also an idea just, hey, gotta talk about it sooner or later, so check it off the list. You know, I gotta talk about Halloween films sometime, talk about Candy Man films sometime. Check it off the list. I will say, even though he riffs on the film, it's always... You don't know how he actually about it. Because there's films he'll make fun of, but he actually does like. And then there's films that he riff on, and he absolutely hates. Because he's playing a character. So then, you're not sure the gauge. Well, which films does he actually like? Which ones he doesn't? I think that's one of the, the things why I never wanted to play a character. Because I want people to know this is what I like. This is what I don't like. This is why I like. This is why I don't. So I'm much more, much more of a simpler guy. Another one he did that was really good was 1980 in film. Because it was very ambitious. It's like over two hours. He's talking about as many 1980 
that first year, how many films of that year, as, as much as possible. I thought that was, again, ambitious, entertaining, well edited. I hope he does 1981, but those would have to be pretty big ventures. But that's something I always wanted to do, but I try, well, I've tried to do that in the past and just got hit with copyright. Hell, I did like my 10 horror films from the 90s I really enjoy, and that got hit with copyright. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I still like Brad Jones, still like Cinema Snob, still liked his stuff. And, glad he's still on, glad he's still continue, continuing doing his thing. Just believe it or not, I'm walking on air. It's just me. So thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. The air is fresh, brisk, and sweet. Why, I could even smell your feet. It's an indie indie doo da morning. Stop. Don't do it. Don't. Fucking do it! Morning, 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 do the morning, do the morning, morning. It's an inky dinky do the morning, inky dinky do the morning. So that song is over with.